JB here, JB here, April 17th, 2023. Hope everybody's doing outstanding on this fine afternoon. Earnings season picks up this week. We have housing da data, then employment number, weekly jobless claims at the end of the week, probably the another data piece people look at, looking looking at. But just want to talk about a couple things. Uh, two trades today, well, two, two, two uh, new positions. Dexacom, DXCM is a name I followed for many years. Gr a great story, great growth story. That whole um, diabetes situation, you got Tandem, you have Pod. People used to do the old school, prick your fingers to get your glucose levels. Um, now it's it's on an app, crazy stuff. Um, some reason um, it's been struggling lately. They were, it looked like there was rumors they were gonna acquire Pod. Pod went nuts, then they weren't. Um, then this morning had an upgrade from, well, BTIG actually came out, <clears throat> raised their price target on Dexcom, and you also had, uh, I think it was Raymond James, raising uh, from outperformed to strong buy, taking a price target 138 from 127. Just needs a little kick in the butt, and I think that, that upgrade is kind of what the doctor ordered for the stock. So it tested 120, came all the way back down to 118. Hopefully find some footing here. If the market finds footing tomorrow and, and Wednesday, I think it trades into the low to mid 120s. I was gonna try and lock some of my calls in. Got them 130, they were up to 210, two, two bucks or so. But me, I, I want to be able to lock in enough to cover costs and still have a decent position to play for the, the move to the upside. Of course, hindsight probably should lock some in, but I still think it's setting up pretty, pretty nicely here. So that's why I added some Dexcom. Uh, Axum Phar Pharmaceuticals, one of my top five stocks for 2023, ticker AXSM. Just a, another name, a great story. They have four um, late stage, well, I think three, two are late stage, phase three, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, they have a, a strong pipeline, I guess, in, in a nutshell. Their major depressive disorder drug got approved last summer. Um, it's starting to get rolled out. Supposedly it's $18 billion total addressable market just for that sector. It's going to be. Um, up near 2026, 20, 2027. 20, 20, there's a lot of competitors, so there's a lot of people who, who look at Axum and think they're not going to succeed. H huge short interest, 23% of the stock is sold short. They also have a possible s solution for Alzheimer's agitation, which might not even get an FDA review. It might just get approved. Um, but th they're into, um, I I'm trying to think the other two one, the other two they have. But needless to say, I think it's a, you know it's one of those names with that Merck making that ac acquisition over the weekend. Uh, for a 75% premium on paying $10 billion uh, for a, a company that doesn't generate $1.5 million in revenues, but you're kind of getting their, you know, the, their, uh, you know, their, their, their pipeline and the ability to cross some of the things they're doing with, with what Merck is doing. So that was some of it, but I think it's just going to open, you know, I said it on the watch list this morning, create domino, a domino effect where you're just going to see a lot of these, large cap biotech names start to scramble to acquire some of the smaller cap names that have been on their radar for quite some time and and some concern that maybe they're going to get gobbled up by some competitors. So Axum is one of those names that I think can get acquired. Take a look at Madrigal, Madrigal, I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, I always think of the Disney movie um, Encanto and the family's last name is Madrigal. I forget how you pronounce it. It spells the same way. But that's whenever I read the ticker. But that's a name, possibly, it was all the way up to 300 after it's a phase three data back in December, which was it was tremendous data. That's some of the reasons why VKTX started to run initially. And you take a look, 300 all the way back down, I think it was 240 or so, and it's kind of been channeling here. And then today it's finally starting to move to the upside. Tough to find decent risk reward strikes, even past 300. So it's one of those that I struggle, I'm not gonna pay $2 for a contract that expires on Friday. That's $50 out of money with no true catalyst. But I do think that's a name that may get acquired before they even start their, their launch of their, the first NAS drug. So that's uh, another name, uh, of course, VKTX. Uh, mind boggling to me, this company still trades under $2 billion in regards to its market cap. You talk about the major depressive disorder addressable market being 18 or between 16 and 18 billion. They're talking about sales for weight loss drugs is going to exceed $100 billion. Everybody's starting to get into it. You see what happened with Weight Watchers last week, acquiring a tele, teledoc company that has doctors that can approve these weight loss drugs 
over online without having to visit a, a location. So now you have Weight Watchers, you know, they're adapting to, to the landscape. So opposed to trying to folks to, to lose weight with eating right and um, exercise and being regimented, having these meetings, now they can they can still do that. But now they have the another possibility or even an add-on a possibility to prescribe weight loss drugs, which have been proven to, to work. I take a look at VKTX. I mean, they had some of the, their performance, I mean, it's only, it's early data, but their their drug looks far superior to the ones that are already out there. Uh, LLY, when it comes out, is going to be the leader in regards to how much weight people can lose over the course of, you know, three, four, five months. But VKTX is right up there. If not more, who knows when that the next round comes out. And they're working on an oral solution. So, uh, I, I'm just shocked that no one's went and acquired them. And they have their Nash data, which is due out sometime in the second quarter. Um, so in the next, it could be could be tomorrow, could be next month, um, you know, sometime before June. So uh, that's kind of the kicker. And some of the reason VKTX was running at the start of the year was because of the MDGL positive phase three data, because their drugs have similar profiles. So one would assume that when MDGL's drug, which is similar, does phenomenal, you would have to think VKTX is going to post some some great data so uh, just a great story not only that had a hundred percent short interest increase on the last uh, short read which came out march 31st well it didn't come out march 31st that was the date that that data was accurate from the new short data comes out i think april 20 24th or april 20 comes out in the next week or so and it would be surprising to see if there's a huge uptick in the short interest uh, the thing with uh VKTX is a tremendous amount of calls on on the open interest on the, on the call side. I was doing, I was trying to add them on Friday. I just didn't have time to go through all the strikes. There's got to be a way I can pull pull this into Excel and just do a sum function at the bottom and, and hit up all the call open interest and all the put open interest. But it's it's staggering, and there's thousands on on many of these months where let's see, I don't even have it up here. <clears throat> You know, yeah, I mean, just the April strikes alone, there's like thirty or 40,000 strikes on the open interest. Actually, I might have it in my notes when I added these up. Where am I? Am I over here? Uh, yeah. Oh, just, there was over 30,000 strikes open on April, 50,000 in May, 60,000 in June. Oh, wait. No, 20,000 in May, another 10,000 in June, and then 2,000 in July. And then you go into October and August. August has another... Just tremendous amount. So uh, today there's already 27,000 contracts traded on the call side. Now, so you could look at that and say, well, this could be some of these folks, the heavy short interest people are trying to protect their, their position by getting call contracts just in case there's some crazy binary event or it keeps going. What we, once they, they can take those profits and kind of offset a, a move to the upside while still profiting if it does sell off. So some you can make a case that's some of it, but... Uh, either way, I think it's bullish. And I think this guy, once it breaks, broke 20 today, once it breaks into the lower 20s, I think FOMO is going to take off. The the hype around Ozempic and all these other weight loss drugs, I mean, it just, it's just going to fuel a fire of, of a short squeeze. I mean, it's already up over 100%. So, I mean, people look at that, maybe they have a little uh, caution, say, wow, it's up so much, I can't chase here. But just a matter of time, I think, before it really starts to get going, as crazy as that sounds. So that's why I keep seeing me add strikes on VKTX. I keep taking some profits on the closer strikes. Um, you know, I have the maze and I might, I might even go out and get some, <laughs> some further ones, but, uh, you know, got up to the June. So anyway, says VKTX, uh, AXSM, um, where else was I here? Oh, edit. So I talked about edit on Friday. Another one of these, these stories, the stock was at 52 week lows. Um, I think it was on Thursday, right? Um, then you had some more leadership uh, transition moves and an appointment new director. Um, I mean, just good news for a company that has struggled to hold on to talent and or had lack of talent, I guess is probably the better word. Since 2006, four or five chief medical officers, which is the key person, especially at your early stage uh, bio company. Um, another name, huge short interest. So if this keeps going, I think you can head over 10. Went and locked the rest of my 750s in today just because they expire on Friday. I didn't want to be in a situation where there's a downgrade and or or some other you know piece comes out and the stock gets pummeled and I lose my profits. So I locked the rest of the 750s in. The 10s, I think I got them for 15 cents. I, they were 45 before. Let's see what they are now. 
Um, I'm just going to hold on to those low, low cost, low risk. So I'm not really risking too much. And I think there's plenty of upside if it, if it continues to go. They're 25 by 35. So I probably could get out for a double now, but I'll just hold those. Uh, Cardlytics hanging on here today, up 3%. Retail sales numbers out on Friday caused sell-off in some of these names. Pool, another name that sold off because of retail sales numbers. I mean, it's the Fed wants re weak retail sales numbers. The Fed wants unemployment. The Fed wants all these uh, negative reports so that it gives them, uh, number one, gives them credibility saying, hey, we're raising rates. Our, it's working. And uh, on the flip side, that maybe at some point they could start to scale back or if not start to cut rates. So uh, Carlos added some more strikes on Friday. I, I probably won't add any, anything more on Carlytics just because it's, it tends to be volatile. It was down at 617 this morning. Now it's back up here at 6, 660. Yeah, take a look at Intercept. Intercept's another name that, you know, I've always <laughs> traded that one for quite some time. Yeah, it's a name that could be acquired. I mean, I didn't even look at the fundamentals now, but I think it trades right around, uh, let's see here. Um, does it trade one times revenues? Might even be less than that. Yeah, Intercept. Uh, the short short's only 9% now. Oh, it trades three times revenues. Still a name that could be acquired. I, I mean, Sage. Sage is, on, I still have 50 strikes, which are no bid right now, 10 cents. But I'll hold those until Friday, and I'll probably, I mean, I don't have a choice unless it really starts to take off here, which it's hitting highs right now. But if um, if Friday hits, I'm probably going to look to get some later strikes on Sage because, again, here's a company. Billion, billions in cash, Biogen stake. Biogen is on the hook for some over a billion dollars in royalty payments. I, I just, I mean, it's just a name. I'm like, why has Biogen not acquired the rest of their, their stake? So um, actually, I don't think Biogen has a 15% stake. Maybe they have like a 7 or 8% stake. I have to go look. <laughs> um, but that's another one, especially you see what Merck did this weekend. It's going to continue um, going forward. Um, I think that's it. Netflix after the close tomorrow. tomorrow. Uh, you know, if anybody watches Netflix, their Love is Blind series came to an end, I guess, on Friday. They were supposed to live stream the reunion yesterday at, at 8 o'clock, I, I believe. Um, sure enough, what happens, it, it's, there's like an error me message flashed on the screen. Then, uh, you know, it has, it's in some kind of loop. And then finally it says, we're having issues. And then they go on Twitter and say, oh, we're going to do the live stream in 15 minutes. They're almost being sarcastic. And then they're re retweeting other people. I'm like, how do you screw this up? So it was like an epic fail. Um, so I don't know if that's some of the reasons. Oh, there, it says Netflix. <laughs> so, yeah, of course, the news uh, headlines. Netflix shares are trading lower in possible anticipation of the company's Tuesday earnings report. <laughs> anticipation. They, you could just flip that around. If it was trading higher, you'd say, Netflix is trading higher on anticipation of the company's earnings report tomorrow after the close. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. All, all you have to do is get, uh, get clicks. Oh, and here it comes. Did CNBC just talk about it? Reality TV is the next frontier in live programming. I don't watch CNBC, so I guess that just that's a clip they just put on there. So <laughs> hopefully in tandem with uh, DXCM. Yeah, TMDM, I love I mean, another great story. How is it down here in the 40s? Um, I think it was Abbott, one of those uh, companies who, um, one of the competitors had an FDA warning or they had to pull something off the shelf. I mean, it, it's got to be a boon for TMDM. I don't know how it's, you know, continues to trade. It just baffles my mind. So I just, sometimes when stock trades where you don't, we're trading where you think it shouldn't, probably, there's probably either a reason or, or probably shouldn't trade it, right? Stay away for a while. So that's probably what I'll do. Uh, Pinto keeps po posting Weight Watchers. I, I mean, interesting story. Weight Watchers trades half revenue. So I, what, I think they do one, one billion sales. It's a $500 million company. They did do this acquisition for $100 million to get this tele, teledoc. Um, company, you know, if they're front and center, uh, yeah, I mean, maybe it's it's done it before Weight Watchers where it's had these these huge moves, and not because of uh, um, sales numbers. I think it was the, one of Oprah Winfrey, right? She was when she took a stake. Forget it, it went bonkers. I'm trying to think of the other catalysts, but I mean, it's a big deal here if you can if you can. Continue its move. It's, I mean, it's up four days in a row. Probably keeps going. <laughs> um, I think that's it, folks. I'll try and get back on the audio later. Well, probably tomorrow. 
Spies up at 413, back in the green. Maybe a churn. I put that on the watch list. It might be healthy here for a churn a day or two. Um, Goldman Sachs, I think, tomorrow. You have Netflix after the close and two surgical reports. IBM this week. Lockheed Martin. I think LMT is tomorrow, too. Um, Bank of America. Could quell the last one to quell concerns around uh, this banking crisis. And, of course, there's MDGL hitting highs, too. <laughs> anyway, all right, folks. Let's have a great day. Uh, rock and roll.